Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a closer look at the equation of the action. Remember the path taken by the particle will be such that the action will be a minimum. But what does that really mean? Well again, let's go back to the equation where the action, which is represented by the variable s, is equal to the integral over the time that it takes to travel the path of the kinetic energy as a function of time minus the potential energy as a function of time times dt. But now let's separate those two portions of the equation inside the integral, so we write it as two separate integrals. So it's the integral from t0 to t final, from t initial to t final, of the kinetic energy as a function of time minus the integral of the potential energy as a function of time. Now let's go back to something we should remember. We should remember the average of a function. So let's say we have a function and we want to know the average of that function from point A to point B then what we need to do is we need to integrate it from a to b over the integral, in this case let's say it's a function of x, then a that will be x equals a to x equals b, and if we then take that integral and divide it by the interval on the axis, then we get the average function. In other words, if this is the function f of x, and we integrate it from a to b, we get the area underneath this function. If we then take the area underneath the function and we divide it by the, the, the path, not the path, but the distance between a and b, in other words, we divide it by b minus a, then we take the area divided by the width and we get the average height, which represents the average function. So we're going to do the same for our action equation. If we take the action and divide it by the time interval, that is equal to s divided by the time interval, which means we have to divide each of the two integrals by the time duration of the travel along the path. Which then means that this equation here, or this integral divided by the, by the distance, or not the distance, but in this case divided by the time that it took to travel the path, that then gives us the average value of the function that's being integrated. In other words, it gives us the average value of the kinetic energy. And likewise here, this gives us the average value of the potential energy, of course, as a function of time. And so what we can then say is that the action divided by the time it took to travel the path, if t represents t final minus t initial, then action divided by the time it took to take the path is equal to the difference between the average kinetic energy and the average potential energy. And then if we multiply both sides by t, then we have the action is equal to the difference between the average kinetic energy and the average potential energy times the time of the path taken, whatever that time is. But then we can see that if we have a minimum action, which means the minimum principle of least action, then it simply means that the difference between the average kinetic energy and the average potential energy must be a minimum as well for whatever the time is that it took to travel along that path. And so essentially, to find the path of least action, we find the path where the difference between these two, the difference between the average kinetic energy and the average potential energy, must be a minimum. And that is how it's done.